WIFO-FM Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by First Southern Bank, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and O'Quinn Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yeomans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally-owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. For FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be, a small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by Oakwin and Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South Fair Street right here in Jessup. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM and Jess, a big dog country radio. And Bob, what a whipping Wayne County put on Trinity Christian yesterday. Yeah, it was a nice win, and I'm glad Tyler hit that home run. Yeah, me too. Last thing I wanted was a lightning delay. With oh, the rain game. was coming, yeah, was let coming. me tell you. We the got dark a text skies, message. I said, please get this game over with. And Tyler hit that three-run bomb that ended in four. I was like, thank you. Thank yeah, you, we Tyler. We got a text message from one. someone saying it's storming. Not storming. It's raining hard in Odom and uh, And I said, oh, Lord, it's coming yeah, it this was way. Ra- it was raining all over the place. <laughs> Uh, but we did get the game in, and, of course, the uh, second round of state playoff action, as you mentioned, will be this Saturday at Howard Bow Warden Field with um, Perry High School coming in first pitch at 3 o'clock. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But right now we got guests in this morning. Bob, who do we have? Well, we got the lady from the hospital, Miss Jill Blizzard, and she's brought one of the doctors with us. So we're Hello, lady from the hospital. <laughs> Hello, <everybody. laughs> How are we this morning? morning? How are you doing? I'm well. Hope you are. Um. So thank you for letting us come in about once a month and, and share with your listeners what's happening in their um, hospital. And so with me today, we have a special guest, Dr. Michael Kennedy, general surgeon. We're thrilled to have him. And we have something new in the OR that he is very familiar with. And so we wanted to come today and share with your listeners what that is. So I'll just turn it over to y'all. All right, Dr. Michael Kennedy, surgeon. How you doing? Not bad. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Glad you're in here this morning. Uh, Jill says y'all are excited about this Da Vinci robot that you have now there in the surgical department uh, there at Waymore Hospital. Tell us all about it, doctor. Yes. Yeah, so um, we recently, uh, where the hospital acquired a Da Vinci robot, which is, you know, you might hear in other hospitals in Jacksonville and Savannah is kind of a new technology that we're using uh, to promote more minimally invasive patient-centered uh, treatment you know, minimizing pain, improving outcomes, and doing things through smaller incisions. Uh, We got the robot up and running uh, last week on April 13th. We did our first cases, and everything went smoothly, went very well. Um, So we've we've been trying to promote this and and showing that we can provide 
the same treatment that you would get in a place like Mayo or Memorial in Savannah that you can get right here in Jessup as well. Okay, now you you do surgeries here at Wayne Memorial, but you all do also in Savannah with correct. Uh, I work which for hospital? yeah, I correct. I work for a company called Metro Surgical. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm associated with it. I, I work at Candler and St. Joseph's in Savannah, but I primarily work out here in Wayne Memorial. Okay, primarily here. Now yeah. tell us how this Da Vinci robot works. How is it beneficial to your patients? So the the benefit here is there's a couple benefits to it. First of all. It's uh, it's basically designed for to improve fine motor skills so that we can do a more delicate surgery with less tissue trauma that will you know hopefully improve outcomes in terms of you know the recovery time. The ports itself are specifically designed to minimize trauma to your muscle and to your skin so that after the operation you don't need as many pain medications. You get back to work. You get back to doing what you love faster. Um, and we do it through smaller incisions. From my standpoint, it helps to improve things because I it's, the camera is 3D and I can see structures. It's almost like standing inside a patient and being able to see structures that I've only read about in textbooks. You're standing so, over them, but now you're, you're standing, standing inside, inside of them. Yeah. With this Not actually standing inside of them, but That's you know, what but I mean, it's, it's like that. that it's, it feels you like that. You see the 3D I all around. I see the 3D. It, yeah. yeah. So a small movement from my hand translates to a, a very gentle movement inside the patient. Okay. And so it, it has, um, it's shown to be very beneficial in terms of fixing people's hernias and also in terms of taking people's gallbladders out too as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what procedures do you use the Da Vinci uh, robot on? What kind of surgeries? So there's a lot of different surgeries that we can use it for. Um, but the, the best the benefit would come from doing hernia surgery, like groin hernias or any kind of uh, abdominal wall hernias. There's a good benefit for that. We can do colon resections. We can take out gallbladders. We can take out appendixes. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of new applications that are coming out for it every single day. People are doing new things. But really the benefit here that we'll see in the community would be hernias and gallbladders. I wish that had been around when I had my appendix taken out in 1990. I got a pretty good scar right down there on my belly. <laughs> Hello, Da Vinci, uh, that Da Vinci robot would have been around. I just had a little low scar on there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Instead of having, you know, spending, you know, a week in bed, you know, having to recover from that, taking oh, that was plenty. Pain. Yeah, or spending a couple of days in the hospital, you know, it's just, it would definitely has a benefit in terms of getting people out of the hospital faster and, and getting you back to what you want to be doing. All right, Dr. Michael Kennedy in here this morning. Tell us, how does it work? I mean, you know, you, you think of robot, you know, you, you're hoping AI is not going to take over the right. place of doctors. Right. But, well, how do you use it? So it is just, it's like a tool just like anything else, you know. Um, it, I'm the one that controls it. It's basically like a big claw that has. A big claw. It has, basically is like a big claw that has four arms. So instead of me and one other person wrestling with each other trying to, you know, use like the laparoscopy instruments to do mm-hmm. a procedure, it's a claw that holds four arms so that I can basically operate like I have three arms. So I have a camera, and then I have three additional arms to do retract things, pull things up, dissect, you know, basically do what I need to do with, you know, without causing me harm, without causing the patient harm, and also makes it a lot easier for the staff so that they're not having to put themselves in, in uncomfortable positions, standing for hours and hours. Um, and it just overall, uh, it makes surgery much, much easier, uh, you know, for everybody involved. Now, you know, doctors are having continual education because there's new yeah. stuff coming out all the time. How do y'all get trained on this new technology, doctor? So I, when I did residency, I did have some training on it, but I trained at a program that was very trauma-based. We did a lot of open surgery, a lot of gunshot wounds, a lot of stabbings. So I didn't get as much training, but I did a fellowship with uh, Metro Surgical where we do, you know, we do a lot of robotic surgery. So I've learned from the people who are above me. I'm still learning, you know. It's, 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 uh, just because I graduated from residency doesn't mean I stopped learning. So it is, uh, you know, with that new stuff coming out, you always have to be reading. You always have to be going to conferences, talking to people, uh, finding out what else someone else is do. Someone may have a good idea that you may not have thought of. And so it's, 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 uh, you know, the thing, the amazing thing about about this career is it's a lifelong learning process. You never know everything. So it's, it's, that's, that's 
that's the beauty of it. Yeah, just because you get that doctor's degree in residency, you're, there's new stuff. I mean, you read about it all the time. There's new yeah. technology coming out all the time that doctors have to learn to be able to apply for their patients. Right, exactly, exactly. And I want to be able to deliver the best and the most current treatment to the community of Jessup um, because they deserve it. Okay. How many days a week are you down here in uh, Jessup, doctor? Five days a week. Five, well, you're pretty yeah. much all week long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I do I do one weekend to call here a month, and then I do one weekend in Savannah as well. Okay. So that's that's why sometimes some of the bigger cases that I need a little bit more expertise, uh, like occasionally, probably like three or four times a year, I might take cases to Savannah, but I try to do all my cases down here. Okay. Dr. Michael Kennedy in the studio with us this morning talking about the Da Vinci robot. Uh, that he, they're using there to um, uh, for surgery at Wayne Memorial Hospital. So we've got what everybody else has got. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, not say everybody else, the big hospitals, hospitals have got. Yeah. yeah, so that you don't the have to hospital. drive two you hours drive. down the road That's you right. know, just to get Ain't got to go to Jacksonville. To no. have, you know, you exactly. All right. Bob, any questions or comments for the doctor? I'm just curious who gets credit for calling it the, the Da Vinci. Did you have to get a patent? I mean, I like it says, that although not a piece of art, the Da Vinci surgical system could be considered a work of art medically. So just curious who comes up with the credit for coming up with the name you know i'm not sure but not sure. whoever did come up with the name i'm sure they're doing much better than me <laughs> yeah. well jill had a good answer for that a little while ago it was a good marketing person and the manufacturer right that's right yeah that's right da vinci has a good name and they they knew what they were doing when they named it yeah all right uh, so uh, doctor we appreciate you coming in this morning and uh, and talking about this it's good that uh, things are you know you know here in a small community is almost like you you you, you have to continue to try to move forward right. as much as you possibly can and you always feel like you know you're like you know one step behind of those big hospitals in jacksonville or atlanta or something like that but way memorial hospital they stay right on the edge of technology and that's good for the residents of wayne county and the surrounding counties you're correct absolutely um yeah i mean if, if you have something you have a hernia or you have an issue with your gallbladder get in touch with your primary care doctor and uh you know get a referral over to metro surgical to michael kennedy and i'll you know work you up to see what we need to do and and get you get you on the on the right path um you know and i appreciate you guys having me on the show this morning thank you very it's, much for taking your time out to talk you. to me yeah. all right jill anything else that we need to talk to the doctor about before you start with your stack of stuff yes um so you all referenced um, training, and there's a whole team in our OR that is also trained on the Da Vinci. And I just yeah. want to mention their names in case they're listening. Mm -hmm. um, the Director of Surgical Services, Heather Elliott. Uh, team of nurses, Tanya Heron, Jennifer Hall. The OR supervisor, Olivia Hall. Richard Harrison, Linda O'Neill, and Heather Byers. So in addition to Dr. Kennedy, these folks have been um, trained on the Da Vinci and um, I heard this little interesting fact yesterday they anticipated about 13 cases to be occurring which is uh, surgeries in 90 days and you're up to 11 cases by 12. the end of this week so in two weeks well three weeks we've done 12 cases mm. so we will more than meet our mark um, and everyone's done a fan chat I, 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 I left those people out that have done so much work behind the scenes because it's not just me. Yeah, it's the whole That's crew. not just me, but there's a lot of people who have done a lot of work and have been really great, and I'm very, very appreciative of everything that they've done. Yeah, if you ever go into surgery, you know it's more than just the doctor standing yeah. there. It's no, a it whole takes, crew that goes with it. It takes a village. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it, it literally takes a village. Well, not a whole village. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Jill, anything else with the doctor? Um, I think that's it. All right. I think I, that's it. But thank you for thank letting you. us come in thank and you very talk much. about I that. It. All right. Now, Jill, what else do we have here? You gave um, us a whole stack of stuff as usual. Yes. Um, and a lot of it is just interesting pictures um, of the Da Vinci in, a, in an OR setting so that, you're, that your listeners can't see. But if you check out the Facebook page, Twitter page, and website later, we're going to upload some information and these photos uh, about the Da Vinci. So... If the, in case there was extra time, I brought in um, time. some information uh, about our newest and latest sale that's My coming. My word, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the thing right there. Yes. Oh, man, that thing is... Is uh, you get, Folks, y'all got to go online and take a look at this, the Da Vinci robot. It is, uh, it is, is something else. All right, I'm sorry to hear you. Oh, I, I just saw the picture. I know, it's amazing. I was amazing. trying to imagine what he was saying a little while ago, and I'm thinking, how in the world you like coordinate claw, right? all them arms? <laughs> it looks like a claw. Yeah. It looks like a claw, yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Man, all right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so um, we, our volunteers, um, 
do a lot of different things at our hospital. And in fact, they just closed out a year of service with 6,202 hours. Um, so those of you out there that, that work a full-time job or, or you're looking at numbers, that's about three full-time employees. So imagine if you had three full-time employees that worked for you for free. And that's what the volunteers at the hospital that's do. That's what the volunteers do. So they have a fundraiser coming up. Uh, it's the $5 Masquerade Jewelry and Accessories fundraiser. It's Tuesday, June 13th, Wednesday, June 14th, and Thursday, June 15th. They start every day at 7 a.m., and on Tuesday the 13th and Wednesday the 14th, they end at 6, and then on Thursday they end at 3, just to kind of pack up and because uh, it takes a while. But if you haven't been out to one of our hospital lobby sales, you need to come, and this is one of the best ones to come to because they have everything, and everything is at a $5 price point, so it's very easy. You know, like when you would go to the dollar store, you know what your total is going to be before you get up to the cash register. You buy register. five items, it's five bucks. Right, Plus exactly. Yep. Um, so the volunteers are amazing with what they do, and they get a small percentage of the sales, and they put it in the, the bank account, and then at the end of the year, they usually donate it back to the hospital for necessary but unbudgeted equipment. And uh, the next time I come, I, I'll, I'll bring some volunteers with me and we can talk all about the work that they do. There's just not enough time. Okay. <laughs> There's just not enough time today. But I wanted to let the public know about that. And that is also on our Facebook page, Twitter page, and our website. All right, Jill. So. So I think that's is that it. That's it. Today. My word. Yes. Either you have a whole sack of stuff, you know. We're, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're able to come in this morning and bring Dr. Michael Kennedy yeah. with you to talk about that new Da Vinci robot they have there. Go on their uh, Facebook page, web page, and take a look at that. That's something else. And yes. it's very beneficial for the patients. And, uh, and Dr., glad that you were able to take a few minutes to come in this morning to tell folks about uh, your experiences with the Da Vinci robot and the benefits to the patients. No, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Bob, any questions or comments for the doctor yeah, or for Jim? Pl- pleasure to meet you. Appreciate you coming in. Pleasure always good to have All right. always good to have surgeons here in Wayne County. Like I said, this, this hospital's come a long way with the surgeries. And like I said, in a couple of years, several years ago, people always had to go out of town. Now the hospital has just expanded, and, and most of the surgeries are being done right here. It saves people a lot of travel, a lot of heartache. So just and glad, family could visit. Yeah, just just, glad, just, glad, just yeah. glad to see the hospital continue to bring surgeons in and do the surgeries here in Wayne County. Absolutely. It's absolutely my it's my pleasure to serve the community. It All really right. is. Y'all take care. All right. Thank All you right. We'll be back more of the world famous Butch and Bob show in a moment. Here's your WIFO forecast. Early clouds but a mostly sunny day. A 30% chance of showers, slight chance of afternoon thunderstorms upper 70s. Tonight, partly cloudy chance of showers, slight chance of evening thunder, mid-50s. Tomorrow, partly sunny, becoming mostly cloudy chance of showers, slight chance of afternoon thunder, highs in the low 80s. And Friday, showers, likely chance of thunderstorms, high of 80. Georgia Chief Meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. The monsters, monsters are, are coming. coming for the Monster Truck Spring Nationals. Three giant shows, May 19th and 20th at 8 p.m. and May 21st at 2. J.C. Fairgrounds, Jessup, Georgia. See the baddest trucks on the planet. With Wheelies, Donuts, Flips, and more. Including Monster Jam World Champion, Bumsy Hunter. Hunter. Heavy hitter, Mayhem. Mayhem. The top female driver in Get Her Done. Get Her Done number two, number two, Predator, and more. See one of the top motorcycle jumpers in the world attempt to backflip. While on fire. Take a ride in a real monster truck. Free parking, plenty of food, and beer will be served. Special VIP tickets available. Get the best seats. Attend the pre-show pit party. Meet the drivers. Get pictures with the trucks. And kids meet our minions and get a monster truck toy. <laughs> get them at O'Reilly Auto Parts, Wayne County Board of Tourism, at the gate and online at SHOWCLIX.com. Sponsored by Neesmith Chevrolet, Miller Lite, Coke, Monster Energy, WTOC TV, Wayne County Commissioners, Landon's Towing, Grant Lewis Towing, Harker Recycling, Yancey Cat, and Bro- Reliable roll off. 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, world famous Butch and Bob show here for this uh, Wednesday morning is the 26th day of April. And Bob, just what a game yesterday for Wayne County. They took advantage of the mistakes that um, that uh, Trinity Christian made. Plus, we had some just good timely hits and good pitching. Just a great performance by the Wayne County varsity baseball team yesterday. Yeah, we really thought we were going to win that second game. They walked 10 batters. We left bases loaded several times. But yesterday, we took advantage of the 11 right. walks and 
able to get the key hits and nine runs in that second inning kind of set the tone. Another outing by Carson Shaver in the state playoff game. Just a great performance by him. Four strong innings, two hits. So it's all about pitching. Like I said, Hadley Long in game one allowed two hits, struck out 11. Carson Shaver goes four innings, allows just two hits. And again, Wayne Kenny came through. It's good to you know get off the deck. But Coach McDonald said it when he was here before the playoffs began. He feels his team set for these three game series. And we have a lot more depth in pitching than a lot of teams did. You could just tell Trinity Christian just ran out of pitching. I mean, they were going Johnny Holstaff, just trying to find somebody to throw a ball over the play. Out there. There. But they said in game two, they walked 10. In game three, they walk 11. So, I mean, it's all about pitching and throwing strikes and getting outs, and they just kind of fell apart. But Ty Pete, next time we'll see him, probably on TV because he's going to get drafted. I mean, 19 19- – Major League teams were there on. 19. The, the, the he had that good of a season? Because he didn't have yeah. that good of a – he had yeah. well, the second game he did pretty good. He had 14 home runs, and he can fly. I mean, speed is what he's going to – you know. I mean, when he went from first to third in a blink of an eye, everybody just kind of went, oh, okay, now we see what they see. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's hard to – Well, is that going to be another professional baseball player that never defeated Wayne County? There you go. <laughs> when he makes millions, like I said, he'll be, they don't care. <laughs> Looking at this bracket, though, we're going to say the next round we get the winner of Cherokee Bluff. Love it if we win. And if it, Cherokee Bluff wins, they're a two seed. They'd have to come to our place as well. But Love it is a one seed. So they'd have that coin flip to determine a coin who flip. host the third round. But I said, I, I was talking to Jay Boshaw, was at the press box with me. He said, you know, I said, what's GHSA thinking? Why are we the visiting team in game two? I mean, you play all year for seeding. You're the number one seed. Why are you the visiting team? I don't. I just don't understand well, what they're thinking. Well, it's different than it used to be. Remember, they used oh, to know, have the, the last two games. It's better, but it's still it it's doesn't better. matter. You should be home team all three games. You're the you you play for that one seed. Well, I can see why they do that park. one game that way. I don't. I don't like it at all. Why? <laughs> why should you? Why should you be the visiting team in your own ballpark? It makes no sense. You may be in an easier region than the other guys. That's the way I guess the way they look uh, at it. I don't know what they look at. they they need to have their head examined. They need to be a home team in all three games. So at least they did get away from that coin flip on the third game. Right. Because that was really a disaster. That was a disaster. Yeah. 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 But it was just nice to see the team just really respond, come out, play well. You know, that nine run second set the tone and then they just continued to pour it on and Tyler hit the three run home run to end it. So it's Perry High School. Perry coaches were there yesterday watching the, the game. They were scouting it pretty good. So Okay. So and so fun. the first game will be at 3 o'clock this Saturday. Now, that's going to be after another event the school's doing, uh, a fundraiser right. for the athletic department there. At right. It'll be Pine after, Forest, right? It'll be after the golf tournament. Like I said the golf tournament starts at 8.15. Yeah, that's, the, that's, the, that's the high school, high school athletic department. Athletic department right. golf. Okay. That's what the proceeds go towards. They go to the athletic department. So. So and that's this Saturday. This Saturday, started at whatever, 8.15. 8.15, right. okay. So all that will be over with. The lunch will be over with and right. plenty of time for people to folks to get out to Howard Bow Warren Field yeah. to watch that first pitch of that first game of the yeah. doubleheader at 3, 3 o'clock, o'clock at Howard right. Bow Warren Field. And looking at the schedule, like I said, from now on, every series is a Saturday doubleheader, the if game Monday. So now, I thought about that. You know, we were talking about why do they do it on Saturday. I guess because it – they don't have to take as much time out of school. You play on a Saturday, it's not a school day. You're getting toward the end of the year. There's a lot of, you know, big things going on. So you only have to take that Monday. So I guess that's the reason why they do that. Maybe it's because I talked to a lot of fans around Wayne County. They're excited because, you know, they don't have to work. They can get to the game they on Saturday. Game too. So mm-hmm. it might be a bigger crowd. Maybe they're looking at more money. So maybe that's a, Probably so we say it's always about the money. Maybe it's a financial thing as well. It could, it could be um, financial. And the kids don't have to take two days out of school, just the Monday. Because you're playing that double header, you got to take a lot of time off. I'm just thinking about these teams that got to travel, though. What do they do if it splits on Saturday? Do they go back to their – According to how far away, or, I guess they are. Do they stay? So, seems like it would be a very big expense for some of these teams. Yeah. Like some of these teams are going you know, four hours plus to play a ball game. But luckily we're at home. We're the number one seed. BC got beat, so they're out. They're out. So no other teams in our region left in the playoffs. Nope. But we do have several area teams that are still in the playoffs, what mm-hmm. you were saying. Yeah. Several from – I mean, say Brantley, Jeff Davis, and Apple on double way advanced. Mm-hmm. Glenn Academy is still alive in their region. Okay. Coffee got beat. Brunswick got beat. Ware got beat. So, there's still a lot of area teams still playing. Okay. All Exciting right. times. It's yep. fun. State playoff action is fun. Big cries, excitement. A lot on the line. Like I said, those do-or-die games are, you know, they're, yep. they're exciting. It's all on the line. 
It's just like the uh, the Hawks last night. They were down three games to one to Boston, and uh, and then uh, and then they won on a last second uh, a shot, shot last night, and now it's three two, and they go back to Atlanta. So, you know, those do or die games. You know, all it's all on the line. You got to put everything out there. And leave nothing. Leave nothing on the bench. All right, Bob. Anything else? Couple events today, like I said. I hope they have a big crowd for the professional women's luncheon. That's today at Coastal Pines Technical College at eleven. Also, don't forget the Crime Victims Memorial today. That's at the Wayne County Courthouse Courtroom C at five thirty. Everybody's invited to that. If you haven't been to one of those, again, it's kind of a, a nice ceremony. It honors the victims of violent crimes here in Wayne County. So it's always a special event put on by the local district attorney's office. That's at five thirty at the courthouse. Okay. All right, Bob, you have a good day. Look it up. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup has been brought to you by First Southern Bank, Murphy Miller Supply, Vans Barbecue, and O'Quinn & Associates.